we're sitting here in quarantine in Thailand and we thought it was the perfect time to kind of explain how we make these videos. We got three days left in quarantine and then we're out, we're free. But in the meantime, a lot of people have asked us about how we film, what gear do we use, and how do we edit? There's been all sorts of questions about this over the years and the last few months in particular. It's about time we we let you in on the secret sauce. Our, our secret sauce. What kind of sauce would you like? So full disclosure, we are not experts. We are not formally trained in videography. We just kind of have fun doing it. This is where we've kind of ended up. This is the gear we've ended up with. It doesn't mean it's like the ultimate gear for you. You might choose something totally different if you're getting into it, that's totally fine. But this is where we've landed and we're really happy with our current setup. So where have we landed? It's been five years, we've sailed over halfway around the world and we've told a lot of stories along the way using some of this gear as well as the camera that we're shooting with. Uh, we're also at something like 280,000 subscribers which really doesn't matter because that's not what this is about. This is about telling a good story on YouTube and specifically YouTube because we specialize in making a living off YouTube. So we're gonna start over here and work our way in a circle around to show you all the gear we use, including the one we're filming with. But before we get there, let's kind of set the baseline of where we film. I'm Ben, that's Ashley. Together, we did the unimaginable. We sold everything and then set off on a mission to sail around the world. Civilization. See you later. Oh, I'm on it. Come on. Come on. Twenty countries later and over 25,000 nautical miles, we are only halfway around the world. I have no idea what's going to happen. Subscribe to follow the adventure as we finish this lap. Our environment is on the water. We're often on a boat, which means the boat's moving and pitching and rolling, so there's, there's no stable ground usually. We also have a lot of salt spray, which means corrosion. We also have stuff happen really quickly. Sometimes there's a gust of wind that comes or we hit a rock that actually happened and you have to be able to pick up a camera and go and start filming. We just hit a huge rock. We've never hit anything before. 30 knot gusts, just remember. Oh, my heart's beating. <laughs> I do not handle these kind of things very well. <laughs> I gotta put some beer on the ice. <laughs> we don't have a script. We don't know what's going to happen. We simply pick up the camera and we start filming. Starting over here, we have our GoPros. These are something that you can easily pick up and use very quickly. And we often have one living in this waterproof housing. Once we're on the boat, one of them will pretty much permanently live in here. So what are your favorite GoPro accessories? This little mouthpiece right here, immerses the viewer into the scene as if they're there doing what you're doing because it's shot from a first person perspective. One of our other favorite GoPro accessories is this thing, this clamp thing, which you have to use like two hands to pull it apart. These are super handy. You put them on all over the boat, they clip onto the rails. What you'll notice is there's no drone on this table and that is on purpose. We have used a drone less and less because one, they're very hard to fly from a boat. Two, there's a lot of regulations in a lot of countries that don't allow drone flying. And three, drones actually are awful pieces of equipment that are really loud and awful sounding. And if you fly them over a village, it, it's really not a nice thing um, to do. It's very intrusive. So what I've been using as of late is a 360 camera. This is the Insta360 ONE X. What I do is I attach a huge carbon fiber pole to the bottom of this. It's a telescoping pole and then I throw it out behind the boat and from there I can then shoot the boat and it edits out the actual telescoping pole so it looks like a drone. Really nice thing to have on a sailboat. The other thing you'll notice here is a tiny little camera. This is an Insta360 GO and this little camera simply attaches to your shirt via a magnet. I have a magnet underneath. With this little camera, you can walk around and kind of capture moments that you wouldn't normally whip out a camera for, or don't want to whip out a camera and draw attention to yourself. The magnet is actually just a necklace with a little round thing on it, and that's that. So next, let's move along to what we call our cams. These are like your handy cams, but they're kind of like a handy cam on steroids. They're not like your dad's handy cam. A handy cam 
has a huge amount of zoom on it and that comes in really helpful when you're walking through a village and you don't want to walk up and shove a camera in someone's face instead you just want to capture their hands you know needing some cava or weaving or whatever it is and you can literally zoom in from here to you know the other side of the room and have it be a macro shot the other reason we use handy cams a lot on a boat is because the distances to what you actually want to shoot is very far because you can't just walk up to it you can't walk on water so we have to be able to zoom and finally uh, both of these cams this is our older one it's a Canon XA20 and this is a newer uh, Sony I don't even know <laughs> this is how bad we are we're not we're amateurs no it's just we don't care I it's an XA53 there you go both of these camcorders have infrared or night vision on them and it picks up a lot more of the light that you need when you're out sailing in the middle of the night yeah we get some great shots that way it's kind of neat so these have actually held up really well this one we've had for five years I think her I think her, I think her preference is still whoops <laughs> <laughs> but this is how we are with gear. <laughs> I think our preference is still the Canon. The one thing about the Sony camcorder is that it has some amazing stabilization in the front of the lens. As I said, the boat's pitching and rolling, so when you're actually zoomed in, which is what these things do, they zoom really far, it seems like the camera person is going like this, but actually you're just really trying to hold it still, and in reality is the waves are just moving the whole boat. So the front of this camera has some sort of crazy stabilization and you can actually see it and I'll try and show you. If I move this, that lens in there actually doesn't move as much. The, the, the last thing sitting on the table and the thing I'm about to go film with is the iPhone or the smartphone. It could be a Google phone, it doesn't really matter. You always have your iPhone with you. It's usually in your back pocket, you can whip it out. It's far less intrusive when you're in a village. People are used to seeing phones. Even in the most remote moat village, everyone has a phone. iPhone footage is better than no footage at all. So if you have a choice of hitting record on the iPhone versus digging through your backpack to get the camcorder out or something else, you're better off just hitting record on the iPhone. To get the footage. So let's get the footage and talk about the last camera in our arsenal, which is the camera we use the most. This is our main camera. This is the Canon R. And uh, on top, you'll see we have a fuzzy mic. This is a directional Rode Video Mic Pro to capture our voices. Uh, it has a dead cat on it, which is a fuzzy shield to buffer out the wind noise. Underneath, we have the Gorilla, Gorilla Pod tripod. So we can set this down wherever we want. So let's have a look at how we edit these videos. That's essentially our secret sauce. Anyone can shoot video, but the editing is what makes the video pop in the end and what makes it work on YouTube. My office is right over here. It's really not that far. We're in quarantine. Come with me. Mmm, <laughs> water. No beer in quarantine. Sparkling water at least. It's kind of nice. I actually use beer often to kind of get myself going. Not too much beer, but maybe one beer, one and a half beers, and then uh, it really gets you editing a little bit more loosely. And then the next day you can do a final pass and then it's all nice and clean and tidy and no one never knew that you drank beer while editing. But anyways, let's talk about the edit. The secret sauce, so to say, it's all in the edit. What you have to think about even before you start editing is the story. What is the story? A story is essentially a character who wants something, also called an inciting incident. The character has to overcome an obstacle or multiple obstacles, and at the end he has a breakthrough. Before we go into a village or before we set sail, we sometimes talk about what the story might be. Life happens though, and you don't always have a story, and sometimes it's just a simple vlog that nothing happens in. <laughs> That's okay too. It's YouTube. Don't stress about it. When it comes to editing though, there's a lot of things that go into it and one of them is sound design. Now I'm not talking about making sure your audio levels are right between the different cameras and making sure there's no wind noise. I'm talking about adding sound effects. Drones, for example, don't capture audio. So you have to add in sound underneath, whether that's 
the rustling of the leaves. Or the voices on a fishing boat that's way too far away that you'd never be able to pick up the sound. So that boat that you just saw, that was actually voices from a French market in Marseille. That was not an Indonesian voice, that was French voice. You gotta get creative. Sometimes there's these crazy fishing boats in Indonesia that are towing nets. Well, what kind of noise does a stretching rope make? You have to think about it, and then you add in that stretching rope noise. You're not going to capture that with your microphone. It's just not going to happen. And that's, that brings me to the next point, which is YouTube. YouTube is a beast. YouTube is a hamster wheel. You basically sit down and from the second you start editing to the time you publish, it's, it's a race. You're not trying to make art. Art is a very selfish endeavor where you're making something beautiful. You're spending your time and, and you're spending your weekends and days and months. YouTube is not that. It's part of that, and sometimes I get caught up in that in the intros and little sections of my video that are pieces of art. But YouTube is about publishing a video every week and building an audience. It's a business, it's a startup, and you rely on the view count, you rely on the weekly video. How many hours of editing does it usually take to make a minute of finished video? Very good question, audience. Someone just raised their hand and asked, how long does it take to make one minute of video? Typically, I edit uh, two hours to make one minute of video. I've been getting that down to basically one hour equaling one minute of polished video. Some of the things that take a lot of time when you're editing videos is finding the right music. Uh, you can have, for example, a cinematic piece of music, or you could have some quirky upbeat music. The other thing you have to think about when you're publishing a video on YouTube is uh, the thumbnail. Something that we often talk about in this industry is called stop the scroll. So when you're on your phone and you're scrolling and you're scrolling, uh, you have to have a thumbnail if you want anyone to watch it that stops you from scrolling. So it has to stand out. Hey father, yeah, I, uh, I got you some uh, water. Why thank you. Not clickbaity, but draws your attention in. And then the title uh, creates so much tension in the viewer's mind that they have to click through. They have to know what happened in that video. So those are just some of the things that come into play when you're actually dealing with YouTube, which is a beast of a animal. <laughs> so thanks for watching this one and uh, hello from our last night in quarantine and tomorrow we see Nahoa. As long as they don't cancel our flight, they already canceled our hotel because of COVID and no one's there, we are good to go. We are going to see Nahoa tomorrow afternoon. I had a look at my liver yesterday under the sheets. It smiled back at me. <laughs> I'd actually like an actual smile. <laughs> Between the workouts and the no beer, I think we did pretty good this. Yeah, it wasn't a bad quarantine. We got a lot done actually. By the time you watch this, we'll have just seen Nahoa and I can't believe it. I'm so excited. Yeah, I might cry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's kind of crazy. Are you gonna cry? I don't know. I often don't in like the main moments, but I cry like leading up to it and then following it. Oh, and I get to drink a beer. <gasps> might, might drink half a beer, but there'll be beer. I might drink a beer too. If you're a patron, you're gonna get a behind the scenes of Nahoa. Um, if you're not a patron, no worries. The video will follow in a week's time. Bye from quarantine and uh, we'll see you next week from Nahoa. That's right, the boat work begins. <laughs>